So we are currently recording and welcome everybody to our uh, experimental stage still of a, a Zoom meeting on a, a regular November uh, event. Uh, obviously, it would be much better if we were all in the same room together. Um, even if you were all over at my house, it'd still be kind of fun to do that. But uh, <laughs> obviously, we're a week we're a week later than the uh, we normally would be, just because we wanted to uh, watch the uh, election unfold, thinking. So, somehow foolishly thinking that we would know who had won <laughs> by Tuesday night of last week. And while we do know kind of who's, who has won, uh, not everyone's fully convinced of that. So we have to let it play out uh, for the next short while, I guess. Um, but it's good to, good to see everybody's smiling face. Uh, you have an interesting evening tonight. Um, I'm just trying to think what our next, we have a next next event is a December event. Is that correct, Don? Do we uh, have a, yeah, there's a field trip coming up, isn't there? Is that this weekend? Field trip on Saturday. I think that might be full. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the next program is the, the first Tuesday, December. It's Pastor Hank from uh, St. John's uh, talking about their solar um, system that they put in. Right. Okay. So that'll be fun. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unless anyone else has any questions or anything like that or announcements, that type of thing. Um, we do have a board meeting next week uh, for all your board members that are present. I'll get that invite out to you sometime in the next day or so, um, along with an agenda. Um, bird seed sale was... Uh, another tremendous success um, and you know now the birds are coming and um, I've seen flocks and flocks of robins all over the place it's kind of fun to see that but uh, yeah everything's still kind of moving through so but I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to uh, Don and uh, let you kind of introduce the evening and then uh, what we're going to do is Don's going to share I'm going to share Don's screen, and then uh, he's going to, it's basically, it's a slideshow, and as each person uh, slides are up, I will try to get you unmuted so you can talk about where we were, that type of thing. So um, it should be available to you now, Don, to, to share if you want to share the screen at this point, or if you want to say a few words, that type of thing. It's up to you. All righty. All right. Well, uh, members night. I am not known for my technology expertise. So uh, who knows what's about to happen, but I did my best with some help putting this PowerPoint together. Uh, originally, and maybe a couple of little asterisk things. Originally, uh, we weren't getting a lot of people sending pictures in. So we um, advertised that maybe if people had more pictures, they could send those in. And then eventually we got a lot more people sent it in. So those that sent in more pictures, I, I have you in two different segments with only like up to six slides um, each. So if some of your slides aren't hidden here, it's because we did get um, a lot of slides mm -hmm. to present. So some of you um, are gonna be in here twice. Um, the other thing when we didn't have um, enough people, I sent out a thing that said, you know, if, if it's this year, 2020, we were worried that maybe people weren't doing things and didn't have slides. So we said you could do something um, from the, the previous year. And I said that basically because I went to Isle Royale in fall and I got some good moose pictures. So that gave me the chance to put my moose pictures into this thing. So what we've done is, okay, we already got a problem. If I hit enter, It doesn't advance, and it did when we practiced so well. Try the arrow. Say that again. The arrow button, just try an arrow button, or click your mouse. There we go, clicking the mouse. Thank you, you Juliet. So <laughs> here's the people who are presenting tonight in the order that you're gonna see your name. Your name will be on the first slide 
so you know you're you're up. And Gary, as he said, will unmute you. And we're asking people not to go much um, over five minutes um, with their their talk about their slides. All good with that? Mm -hmm. Laura Dufford is up first. All right. Well, this first picture is uh, Doug and I took a quick trip down to Southern Illinois this fall. So this is um, some uh, photo of Cypress Swamp down in Southern Illinois. So do I move it for, I mean, I, that's all uh, I was. I guess I'm either going to have to read your pause or just tell me to advance. Okay. Okay. This just is a, do a do a loud just do a loud bing. Okay, <laughs> so this is a, a little brown skink that we found while we were down in southern Illinois. These guys are found in the southern one third part of the state, and as you can tell, it's that's on someone's finger. So they're tiny little guys and very cute. So ping. <laughs> oh, look at that. And, this is a Garden of the Gods, also in Southern Illinois. It's one of those places when you see advertisements of Illinois places to go, this, this spot is always in the advertisements. It's a beautiful, beautiful area of, of the state. Ping. This is a Bell Smith Springs, another really pretty spot. Um, we had never been there before, so. Really nice spot, colors were great. Um, and that's that, so ping. <laughs> this is a Fern Cliff, which is a, a nature preserve, I believe. Um, down also uh, in the Goreville area and lots of nice hiking and cliffs and a pretty sweet spot. Ping. Okay, Laura, I divided Thanks. yours up into two. At this time, do we want to open it up for questions? If people have comments or questions they want to ask, <clears throat> Laura, let's Gary? let's do that at the end. Maybe we can do that at the end. It'll be easier. Yeah. Okay. I'm up. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, I had so many pictures; it was ridiculous of butterflies in nature. But I, so I picked some that kind of inspired me. And uh, these are the scarlet tanagers. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Um, you know, I had, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, you know, the Orioles were crazy this year, but I think at one time there was nine or 10 scarlet tanagers, a, a couple are on the deck railing there. So I, you know how hard it is to get pictures, but so I quick got my crazy phone camera and oh, yeah. it was awesome. <laughs> to see that ding next and oh a couple of my favorite people i didn't know whether to call this love on the prairie or just you're never too old to walk down the prairie trail that's uh judy and harlan corey um the reason i put that in because they're two of my favorites but also this is uh the field trip that audubon had at the Lake Carroll prairies where we live and we formed a prairie club. And so the Audubon group came on a field trip, it was August 14th. And of course, everybody was fantastic, wore masks and we had lunch there. And, and then most of them went, took a, a couple of trucks up to the Ramnet Prairie, which is another prairie we discovered here. So we're, we've got a prairie club now, we're working on these prairies, so. Uh, that's that's those two. Next, <clears throat> this was uh, we went on a prairie burn early in the spring. Uh, this is around Stockton, around around you somewhere, Laura. As uh, a private guy out of Chicago, he's got lots of acres here, and I think we burned like three different areas. But it was so cute. These horses. There is a fence up there. And they were running around like wild. And I'm like, wow, where are we, you know, in Colorado? But then I, uh, then they actually just came running over towards us. We were in a couple of pickup trucks and they came over and just kind of stared at us for a while and they took off again. I just thought it was really cute. So next. 
And this was so, so inspiring for us when, now we work for NIPE and um, every time we go down this road in the spring, actually um, this is blood root out in the woods. You know, we have it in our woods where we live too at our house. And, you know, of course, who doesn't like those spring ephemerals, but these, this is just one little area. I, I had another picture of the whole, the whole woods is just covered in this blood root and it's just so gorgeous. And, you know, of course, being ephemeral, they don't last a long time, but they're just so nice, you know, early spring to see that. Love it. Next. Uh, this is just my my front yard prairie. I figured if you're like me, you kind of miss this already. <laughs> the green and the, the different colors. And uh, I don't know if this is, I oh, this must be the video. I didn't know if a video would work. So it's kind of working. It's about a four year old prairie. And then down where that trail is further, there's a septic area we planted uh, just actually last year. Or so, and it's got, prairie coming up. So, you know, it's just, I missed it. So I'm like, oh, I got to put that up there. And, you know, everything's brown right now, but <laughs> I don't know if that's it then or not. That is. And now Patty Wake is next. I'm trying to get her to unmute. Um, she's on her phone. There you go. Oops. Patty, go ahead and try to talk because it looks like you're unmuted. Yep. Because she was yeah, messaging. She was unmuted. Okay, she was messaging me that she couldn't do anything. Okay. She should be. Yep. She should be unmuted. Okay. Because otherwise, she said for you to share the Zeus story. <laughs> well, are you there, Patty? Yeah, I think she's. There. Technical difficulties. Well, maybe she can jump in here at any second, but uh, Patty actually lives right down the street from uh, where I'm at. And this was a, uh, she's got a great story about this little guy. He had fallen out of the nest. They found him on the ground and uh, him and Patty both decided that he was too young to be on his own down on the ground. And they uh, ended up putting him kind of in a hanging basket. and. He just kept hanging out there until he could learn how to fly. And uh, that's, that was their sweet little story. They call him Zeus because he was just a mighty little warrior. Cute. Uh, we got some great shots. But that's the basket. They, they put the basket down on the ground. And then that's where he slept at night. And uh, the mama eventually and papa found him and just began feeding him and feeding him. And they... They, Patty and Tim wasted about a, not wasted, but spent the entire week out in their backyard watching, watching this little guy grow. So pretty special. I'm sure one of those pictures may end up in her calendar. But uh, obviously this is a, this must be a fairly recent shot because Pine Siskin's uh, just attacking her yard. And, uh, yeah, she's she's got a pretty neat little setting. Um, so is that a uh, that's a? Uh, is that a red breast? Is that a red Is that a what? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, now, do you think Juliet, red breast and nut hatch? Carolina Wren. Carolina Wren. Carolina Wren. Oh, okay. Tailed it to me. Mama Cardinal. Now it's the quiz time. Everyone name what this bird is. <laughs> <laughs> Text telling me that this is Jubilee, or unless the Carolina Wren is Jubilee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, it was a typo. It was juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> juvenile Cardinal. Northern Cardinal, I should say. Oh, All right. Those we'll be back, Patty. <clears throat> All right, Elizabeth. 
Yep, this, is, this was from back in May. She froze on us. I think we lost her. Oh, I think so. Her mom is on here. Her mom yeah. <laughs> continued really close to me, like within like 10 feet. Oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah, so sorry, that... my Wi Fi is kind of bad. And yeah, they got really close to me and they followed me for a good half an hour or so. They were just kind of mm -hmm. like my little buddies that day. It was fun. <laughs> out at Highland, right? Yeah, out at Highland by the pond. Okay, well, this is actually my mom's photo, and she's here tonight, so I can let her explain it. Well, I was so excited because I received some milkweed seeds at one of the Audubon meetings, and so I went home and I planted it, and these little tiny shoots of, of milkweed came up, and then I saw where a caterpillar, their monarch, had um, was eating it, and I was just so thrilled I had to take a picture, and so now I, I got some more seeds and I've planted more for next year. Oh, I still got the H in there, darn it. Teresa. Oh, Teresa, it's not supposed to have an H in her name. It's okay, yeah. that happens frequently. Got it in the other spot, Juliet caught it for me. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Um, Tim and I did, you, I, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Tim and I did several, what I called one day vacations over the summer months here. Um, both, um, basically left home in the morning and came back that same night. One of our one day vacations was on the Mekan river, um, which is in Wisconsin. As you can see, the leaves are just starting to turn there. Um, it was an absolutely beautiful day, um, to be on the river. Next. Um, we traveled up I-39 um, and then we got off on State Route 23. So it's relatively close to the Portage area, a little bit east and north of the Portage area, um, just to put it into perspective of um, where we yeah, put on in the river there. So next. Um, Tim and I are both early morning risers, so we did get up pretty early, um, got on the river by nine o'clock, and this was Mother Nature's first attempt at decorating for Halloween for the season. Oh. <laughs> so we took in the colors and the cobwebs and the, not probably the highest quality photo with the sun coming in there, but I wanted to capture the spider webs and it was yeah, just absolutely stunning to see all the spider webs along with the bright colors. Um, the Mekan River is one of three streams in Marquette County that has naturally reproducing trout. Um, you can see from the photo that it's relatively clear and in fact very clear. Um, it's a small meandering stream with a lot of coves in it. Um, and still relatively cool temperatures for the most part that allows for reproducing trout there. So mm -hmm. again, great scenery. Next. Um, and this was at the end of our trip, taking that road less traveled. Um, because of the COVID situation, some of our trips we did independently. Tim would take off on the bike at the end of the trip to do the shuttle, and I would get my daily walk in while he was doing the bike shuttle. So. Um, the walk was very beautiful. There was everything from a little sneezeweed to some uh, monarch butterflies to outstanding color along the route um, that I was walking. So if you're looking for a, a great place to canoe or even hike, there was a lot of um, areas to hike through here. The um, Ice Age Trail meanders through this area as well. Um, we basically put in at um, the put in for County Road Y and JJ, and then we took out at Highway 22, which is about 10 miles. Um, and there was some um, hiking trails along this one as well. So, um, and I think that's it. All right. Uh, You're up, Don. My, yeah, my set. These are my twin granddaughters who are five at the time, but today oh. they turned six. And we did a trip on the Kishwaukee River. And of course, lunch on a sandbar is one of the highlights of a 
of a trip on the Kishwaukee uh, River. And uh, I, I love the rivers. And you know, when you have your own kids and your grandkids, you want them to, to love some of the same things that, that you, you do. And um, I learned by raising two boys and a girl that, and you're always interested in nature, not to take them one mile too long or one hour too long that you got to leave them wanting more. So my grandkids are the benefactors of me learning that lesson by grow, uh, raising three kids and also bring some stuff along like nets. We found this little backwater that was just full of frogs and tadpoles that uh, they got right in there and grabbed some and put them back and we found them in all stages of metamorphosis. It was, it was a fun, fun, fun day swimming and wading and uh, uh, normally a trip about an hour and a half. I think we were on the river for four hours. And I told you, we always want to leave them wanting more and they still wanted more. They couldn't wait to go back. And so um, having earth play, Terry Tempest Williams calls it earth play. And I'm a firm believer in that. And I already made my excuse that, that I stretched this slideshow into last fall, uh, early fall. And I don't know how many have had a chance to go to Isle Royale, um, an island, 40 mile island, a national park, uh, least number of visitors there than any national park in the system. And it's 40 mile by 10 or 15 mile wide island. And it has all kinds of different uh, habitat from bogs to uh, uh, different kinds of forests and prairie areas and has this greenstone ridge. So the limestone or the, the geography of the place is just, just very special. It's a three and a half hour boat ride to get there, but it's it's worth it. Unless Lake Superior is really rough, then maybe it's not that worth oh. it. <laughs> and, it's the uh, 45th anniversary of uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald too. You should probably add that, huh? There you go, there you go. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, we all have our favorite animals. Uh, I know it changes from day to day, but I've always uh, loved moose. And and we I've been up there three or four times and never been disappointing in the moose. This is a, a fairly early in the morning. We got out of our tents and we heard some splashing and there's this big gal um, out there waiting in the, in the backwaters. And they have, they have um, these like Appalachian huts in certain spots. And we came in late one day after a long hike and it was in a storm. So we, we slept there. We tried to choose to sleep in our tent. And we got up to a beautiful morning and we were getting breakfast going. We were going down to uh, some filter some water. And this, this gal moved in and she stayed there for about two, two hours. Um, we let her stay there and took some great pictures. and. Uh, we had talked to the ranger. He said, you know, sometimes they just get up there and they lay in front of these buildings. So people are stuck inside for a good <laughs> amount of time. So at least we are outside of the building. That's funny. <laughs> Those are my, my shots. No, no, no. Oh, it looks like I'm back on long. again here. <laughs> yeah. Why well, took a... I took a few shots this summer. I uh, helped with a bumblebee survey at a property over here in Joe Davies County. They had found rusty patch bumblebees over their last year. And so they had had a permit through Fish and Wildlife Service to do a survey and that we were able to capture, capture bees. Otherwise, if you know there's a rusty patch bumblebee on the property, um, you really aren't supposed to capture bees and we use glass, uh, little plastic jars, kind of like when you're a kid. I feel like I felt like I was a kid this summer out running around chasing bumblebees. But um, one of the, there's different kinds of bee, bumblebees. And this one here is a black and gold and it's actually a pretty big, big bumblebee. And it was, we were just fascinated to watch these bees crawl into a uh, cream gentian and you could just, you know, we watch them, they'd fly, fly over to it and they climb in and sometimes it would just totally disappear. And it was just really fun, fun to watch that. So I, I just had a few shots of that. I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah. So this is, this is it after it emerged. So 
Um, it had been in there and it came out and so it was just kind of fun. Okay, my turn. Um, so a year ago at this time, I had my husband, because I don't do well with digging into the ground, but I had him put up a bluebird house because I wanted a bluebird uh, to be a, a property. And we have a big backyard that's just a, a park. Um, so it, it was perfect habitat. So we wanted to get it in the ground before winter and the COVID hit. So it was actually kind of helpful that I was home more so I could actually see and I saw them come back and forth and arrive. And this picture was later in the summer, but first we had house sparrows. So um, they unfortunately, um, the bluebirds tried and the house sparrows came in and crushed them and built their nest on top of the bluebirds. And we are allowed to uh, remove the house sparrow. So I sadly, even though it was a bird, um, it was a bird that destroyed another bird, um, but I, I did remove the house. <laughs> I did remove the house sparrow nest and then I, we actually did a lot of landscaping at the same time. I had us cut down some shrubs and I said, this is what's keeping the house bears. Let's get rid of some things. And that actually helped a lot. The house bears kind of moved on a little bit and the bluebirds came back and then I kept peeking out. And then one day I peeked in and I saw the eggs. So now it was watching to see when would they hatch. So you can go ahead and go to the next picture. And one day, I looked out with my binoculars and I saw this parent having a morsel in their mouth. And I said, that means they're born. Um, mm -hmm. I watched them so much that Willow actually says, mommy, put your binoculars down. So <laughs> I, I think that was a little too much um, because the perfect view was right outside our kitchen window and our um, three seasons room. So it was all, every single window on that side of the house, you could see them. So the next picture, okay, so backtrack a little bit. You can keep the picture, but there was a board meeting where I kept saying, I think the bluebirds are hatched, but I'm so nervous to open it because I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want the parents to, to get away. And then everyone gave me peer pressure and they just said, just open it, <laughs> just look. <laughs> and it was so worth it. So I did open it up and took this quick picture and I counted all the heads and there were five eggs before and five little heads here. If you can see, there's one tucked in the corner. And that was probably one of the few times I peaked because I know that there's a window of when you shouldn't anymore because it might make them fledge too soon because they're scared. So I did it a few times and then I did try showing Willow, but she it was a little too short for her. And plus she wanted to kind of grab at it. So I left it alone and I just kept watching every day. And I think next slide shows the parents. Yep. So then I was watching both of them and it was just really a, a touching moment. Um, the, if you're wondering what the wire is, um, they're helpful to prevent the house bears from coming in the first place, but because I didn't put it in until after the house bears destroyed the first nest, there was still a possibility that the house bears would continue to fight, which they did. The male parent was so good at fighting them, but it was so nerve wracking because it, would, it just takes one moment for the house bear to come in and just crush them. But mm. I was very impressed with how these parents were. The mom would be in and out feeding, getting food, and the, the dad would too. So you can see the mom on top and the dad down below. So my, my main point with the wire is if you don't want house bears in the first place, I think it's helpful to get them in earlier because the house bears learned that it was nothing. And this might be the last picture. Um, so with COVID and teaching online and Willow, I didn't write it in my calendar properly. So I actually missed the day they all left. So it's very sad. Like one day I just said, I don't see the parents at all. Uh, but this was one of the last pictures I took. Um, the sun was setting and I looked over and they're just sitting on those solar panels. And it was almost like they were saying, thank you for giving us a home and goodbye. <laughs> and the day that they fledged, I have no idea when it was. It was probably one day when I was eating breakfast, who knows. But then about a month later, even a few weeks ago, I, I kept seeing some bluebirds. I think it was the offspring that kind of poked in and out visiting. So I'm curious to see what happens next, uh, next spring. If they, if one of the family members come back, these are my little babies. <laughs> oh, so then, so when I knew I missed it, I, I, I remember telling Adam, I'm going to go check. I think they left without saying goodbye. <laughs> so he's watching me open it. And I think he saw me like my physically sulk, like they're gone, but just check out this nest and this mess. Um, it just shows that they, they live this life very well. And if you check out the background, you can see it's open. I mean, this is the perfect habitat for them, just open space. 
but a lot of poop. So I cleaned it out and it's ready to go for next year. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, I'm Barry Troy and I'm with the uh, Freeport Art Museum. I have a couple of uh, things to share with you. I, I think it was a couple of years ago already when I visited your meeting, um, all excited about having the uh, Layaki Museum Birds and Art Show come to the museum. And um, we were all set to go and, and, and then COVID came and there was some money disappeared. Um, nobody stole it. It was just availability of certain funds uh, because that is a very expensive show. And uh, so uh, it was we canceled it and they were very gracious and not charging us and a fee for that and all that. Um, so in discussing it, uh, we came up with an idea and it, I guess, you know, that uh, uh, when things like that happen, you uh, find interesting things to do. And, and uh, so there's an artist, Alice Hargrave, who um, uh, works with science and art. Um, she uh, likes to study the bird songs. In other words, the recordings of them. And she makes large print installations of these very beautiful um, and uh, also uh, kind of standard prints that you can put on your wall too. And she also has uses the recordings of these birds. Um, look up her, her website sometime. She does a lot of different things, but um, she's uh, uh, going to be coming to the Freeport Art Museum March 13th, opening an installation of her work. And, and my understanding, it's a, it's a new work and uh, um, we, we do have enough money to uh, cover all of that. Um, and that's going to take place in one gallery. In the, in the next uh, major gallery that we rotate shows in, um, I decided that uh, it would be good to um, have an invitational for uh, Northern Illinois artists, maybe a few scattered beyond that, uh, who maybe don't even nor normally do bird art, but to submit a bird painting or a sculpture and so on. So, so far I have about, uh, I think it's somewhere, I just got a list today, somewhere around 12 artists. Um, I'm, I have a, another list of names they send out there. So uh, in one, there will be this installation of, of Alice Hargrave's work and the other one, um, all these wonderful paintings that I'm sure the talented artists of our region will submit. Um, we're, tomorrow we're going to have a meeting. Um, we'd like to, uh, uh, of course, uh, collaborate with as many people in Freeport as possible. So uh, we're working with the library, Winnesheck Theater, um, Audubon Society, um, and uh, to broaden uh, what might happen with this show. Um, there, I, I hate to even say something if it not, not comes through, but there's a, there's a special birder that I would like to have come at, at least to a Zoom talk, not only to adults, but to kids as inspiration. Um, and I, I won't divulge that until I, I get that okay. But it, 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 it's amazing. I used to live in Trinidad and Tobago, and if any of you uh, birders have ever been down to the Northern Range in Trinidad, it's one of the most um, uh, famous uh, birding areas in the world uh, in terms of what is available. I encourage that, but um, uh, it's through that route that I, I learned I have a, a six degrees of separation from this uh, famous birder. So uh, we're hoping that all comes about and um, I know that we'll have what draw a bird day, Juliet. Um, it will happen during that time. I think it's it, before it was going to happen in the later fall. I don't know, for me, I like the idea that it's gonna be starting at spring running into June. Uh, so I think there's a lot of things that can happen there and I'm sure uh, we'll come up with some great programming uh, tomorrow night at our Zoom meeting there. So very happy about that. The second thing, um, I'm a painter. I, I, I used to do uh, nothing but abstractions, but uh, somehow uh, my, my taste for realism came back to me because my early training was in highly realistic painting and drawing. And um, I've been doing pet portraits and everything, but at the beginning of the COVID, I was just recovering from an operation on my foot and I, I would um, hobble downstairs and I would paint for a few hours in the morning and then later on. And I, I somehow, I, I painted a bird and then I, I thought, well, what, what more can I do with this? And I ran across a list of 
of uh, endangered species in Illinois. And I guess obviously these birds travel beyond Illinois now. Somehow these 28 birds were identified with Illinois. And so um, I said, well, let me do 28 portraits of these birds. And I, I would change the background colors, make them a little bit more pop art. Like these are 12 by 12 uh, canvases. Um, and so I, I painted 28 birds uh, in a little bit over a month and a half while I was recovering. And, and then um, uh, I think I finished up uh, uh, with, the, oh, what is it, Chuck Will's Widow. Uh, which is, I, I think it's called a jarhead bird. I don't know if any of you are familiar with them. The most difficult bird to um, to paint because of the complexity of their camouflage. The, the, I mean, it, I, I still have to come back to it and try it again. But um, um, anyway, uh, I, I, these, these will go on exhibit and I'm hoping I can take a third gallery in the museum during that bird art show and put these upstairs uh, for everyone to see and then have these for sale. But in the meantime, I found a company called Finer Works. Um, and so I've set up a, an account with them and you can go to this account and you can find this on my website, which is uh, barrytroy.com. Uh, uh, so that was, um, I love the, the Osprey and this is a Swain's uh, Warbler. And really every painting I did, I've forced myself to try and get more and more detail to understand what was going on with those ridges around the eyes, the tininess of those feathers, uh, just amazing. And uh, the Swain's uh, warbler, and then the next one is the Swain's uh, uh, hawk. Um, uh, these were two, actually my, two of my personal favorites because of their, their, the grayness in them and everything in a different, um, I think they turned out really well in this one particular looking at you. So, um, uh, hopefully, I, I'm, I'm boosting the bird. What's that? I said he looks so mournful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think so, but okay. um, I uh, um, uh, am boosting the on Facebook, boosting the advertisement of these sales um, across the United States. Um, I think last uh, week we reached uh, over a thousand people looking at them. I haven't, you don't always get a lot of sales, but you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully more will come. So that's, that's my story. <laughs> Go to barrytroy.com and you can click on it. You can see all 28 birds at the, it's called the Geo Galleries. Yeah, this is all, this is all really cool for sure. Yeah. I'll try to speak for Kara. Um, these are what, barn swallow or tree swallow? No, I don't remember. Help me out, birders. Who one makes the mud nests? Oh wait, or is this an insect? Oh. Is it a wasp? <laughs> Maybe it's an insect. <laughs> yeah. So, but this is a this is a bird's nest, isn't it? Yeah. Keep going. You're putting the ornithology teacher on the spot. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They're not cliff swallows. No. Yeah, they probably be cliff swallows. Okay. Mm. Oh, but they're underneath. I have no idea. Did she email what this was? New Mexico. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah, she took the trip to New Mexico, and this is she took her grandkids to White the White Sands. White Sands, yeah. Is that National Monument. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well named. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing place. You're just driving along, and all of a sudden, there's you see that you know. All of a sudden, you see this white sands out in the middle of seemingly nowhere. Pretty nice. All right. Gary. Huh. All right. Well, we had a couple of different opportunities to take trips this year. Um, one pre-COVID and then one post-COVID or mid-COVID, I guess I should say. We're not post-COVID. Uh, the post-COVID one, we took a trip up to the Upper Peninsula and uh, got a chance to see uh, just to sit in my car and, and watch this kingbird uh, feeding and sat there with my big lens and, you know, just waited for that moment when he, you know, was in the sunshine, that type of thing. So, but that was up in the, up near Houghton, Houghton in the Upper Peninsula. So next, I should do the beep. And then this, uh, this, 
this little feller. I got a friend of mine that works at MicroSwitch downtown Freeport, and he called me and said, hey, there's a there's a bird underneath one of the cars out here. Can you come out? And I said, well, what's, what's, is there a problem with it or something? And I went up to it and then I, I drove over there real quick. And this, this young uh, fledgling was underneath the, the vehicle. And I thought, is he hurt? You know, and, and next thing you know, he kind of crawled out, flew up onto the uh, post. And it was just a couple of fledged bar dolls that were, you know, just kind of hanging around the parking lot. I got pictures of this thing. He came and landed on some of the cars there and hmm. that type of thing. But they were, you know, they the nest was evidently right there alongside the river. And they were just not real wise enough yet to know that uh, they were in pretty dangerous territory. So I got a shot at him. Hmm. And then uh, next, this was at the, uh, this is at the, Oakdale, the Newell Reserve, and uh, this was earlier this spring. Uh, just the warblers coming through, and uh, so that's just a great. It's one of my favorite spots to go in town when they have you know an hour or so and get down there when there's no one else around. So next, what's mm, next? I like that. This this is a uh, it's called a phaino pepla. Yeah, and this was uh, we were in California on our way to visit my son. We had been in Arizona, and we drove over to California. And we stopped at the Joshua Tree uh, National Park, uh, another one of those national parks that there's very few people. And That's I right. saw this bird flitting around, flitting around, and and made made I, we stopped and it drives my wife crazy. You know, she's trying to get us somewhere and. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, I think I want to try to get a picture of this bird because I've never seen one before. So it was a life bird for me. And I had to look up to see what it was. I had never even heard of the name, let alone seen one before. So next. Mm. Oh. And this this is at the, this is one of those uh rare moments where you're, you know, we've we've been to Green Island. This is on the the day of the birdathon and I, it's probably been four or five years since I've seen a yellow-headed blackbird. And mm. uh, we were on Green Island and all of a sudden I looked down and there's one sitting right next to the, you know, we were driving along and we stopped, stopped real quick. And there was just sitting there, um, just a, a gorgeous bird. And uh, like I say, it was a retreat because it had been several years since I've seen one. And then last but not least, I think, Kind of a bonus uh, feature. I don't know if you can see that real well, but that's a uh, shot of the, the comet Neowise that was uh, visiting us uh, during the, the late spring, early summer. Uh, I was getting up really early in the morning and then late early in the evening. Uh, just put on a really tremendous show. Um, just uh, enjoyed trying to get a picture of that thing. Was this outside of your house in your yard? I was up in, uh, it's uh, just up the street from where you guys are at, where those houses that live, you know, right around where that the nature field is. Yeah. Yeah. It's up in that area. Yeah. Awesome. So. It's a great photo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next. Pam like. Oh, Pam's okay. back. Okay. Um, yeah, no, Pam. No, that's it's bad. <laughs> Go back to the last one, uh, just so I can sure. tell you what it was. Okay, so she said the belted kingfisher was at the wetlands north of Freeport, and this is lucky. Those of you who ever see belted kingfishers, they're fast. Um, this is a male, so they have just the the one stripe. Where if you saw the rusty, it would be female. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, the these yeah. so. The heron and the egret, this was at the same wetlands, it looks like. Oh no, Rockton. <laughs> okay, never mind. So she's messaging me. So I'm trying, I'm trying to keep up. So same area, and you can see it's a great egret and a great blue heron behind. So this is Nigran wetlands? It, no, I think it's still Freeport. The oh. wetlands uh, north of Free, uh, on 26. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so now there's two great egrets, and I'm waiting to see if she'll message me where, because this one might be the Nigran wetlands. Yeah, this one's Nigran. So I remember that she posted this on Facebook, and I think this was her very first time there, which was shocking, because as a photographer, I would think that she would go there all the time, so I bet she will go there a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but this was her first time at Nigran, and uh, glorious shots here. You, I, I think they're just majestic birds. So I will tell her, go there when the pelicans are really abundant. So I think you'll love it. All right, so I'm assuming same location. So another great egret in flight. And one thing to notice, I'll do my teacher mode here. Um, egrets curl their neck uh, versus cranes keep their neck straight. So if you're ever wondering if it's something flies by you quickly, um, look for whether it curves or not. All right, so there's sandhill cranes and that's probably nigran as well so great day um i'm gonna see can you message me the date that you went do you recall when it was just so we know time to move here and give it a moment okay she's thinking. <laughs> but you can um, see and then the great egrets in front but check out how they blend in so well and you can see some of their little red heads but i think the one in flight is probably my favorite part yeah. Okay, and you can see more of them. And I think that's it. So thank you, <laughs> Patty. I wish Patty could have narrated because I'm sure her stories would be better, but um, I'll let Don close it out then. Cause I think that's all that Patty's messaging me. So that's it. Mm -hmm. I could like to mention something. That October. Okay. Can I mention something, Gary? Sure, go uh, ahead. That uh, when Barry Troy was talking about the bird art, um, I'm part of the Momentum Art Guild and we're gonna be putting up paintings and one of mine is going to go up there, at least one, maybe maybe oh. two, depending on how many I get done in time. <laughs> I think we, I was originally asking for one per artist because we're trying to expand the number of artists. Uh, right. But if you do two, send them along and if we have room, of course. Yeah, and you can pick whichever one you like, of course. Sure, well, I'm happy you're participating. Thank you. Oh, and Gary, Gary, the reason you don't see too many yellow-headed blackbirds, they're on threatened endangered list. Wow, that's hmm. rare. Yep. Yeah, we used to, we used to, there was a spot that we always would see them for our bird -a and uh, they drained that area. And, you know, it's it's the typical scenario, the, the habitat loss. That was that the first was bird I did a painting of for that series. Really cool. Yeah, they're so they're so striking. You know, when you see them, it's just like, wow! Wait a minute, what is that? But uh, anybody have any questions uh, for any of the presenters? Uh, as you you know look back or you think back in your mind, whatever pictures you saw, that type of thing. Um, everybody's pretty much unmuted, so if you wanted to jump in and ask a question or tell a story maybe if you didn't have pictures to share, but you, you know, we could open it up to anybody that's interested in sharing something that maybe something fun that you've done during our COVID shutdown uh, <laughs> that would inspire the rest of us. Well, Nigren is pretty awesome. If anybody has gone to Nigren, that is just, amazing it's a wonderful hike and the birds are incredible absolutely Teresa yeah where, where in Wisconsin did you go what was the name of it uh the Mecan River M M E C A N it's probably about 40 minutes north and a little east of Portage. Okay. We took 39 up and then, yeah, if you look for Montello, that's the closest, you know, town. Mm -hmm. Because there was a little road construction going on on the way up there. And we were sitting at the stoplight and the mosquitoes were just swarming outside the car. And we were like, oh my gosh. Oh. But then when we got to the river, we didn't see any. 
Yeah. So you didn't camp out or? <laughs> no, we're glad we didn't camp out. <laughs> yeah. Gary, I didn't catch the name of it. What? The, for what, for what picture was it, do you know? Um, well, one of the birds, you said something about Newell Reserve or? Newell. Oh, the, uh, the Oakdale, the Newell. Yeah. Full section of the Oakdale. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, uh, oh it's a, all right, yeah. gotcha. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of areas down there, a lot of different little biomes, that, mm -hmm. especially during the spring, uh, when there's when there's warblers, and especially down in the lower section when there's nobody else around. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. We walk there a lot. All right.